I'm the founding co-director of the uh, Advanced Institute for Globalization and Culture. This is our inaugural lecture, and, uh, and we're really uh, happy to have uh, a good crowd out uh, to help us celebrate. The goal of the Institute is to help facilitate discussion, debate, and research on what globalization means today, both here in Thunder Bay and abroad. And to provide new opportunities to link academic concerns with community concerns, for example, about how cities form identities, generate new economic opportunities, and connect us to the international community on every possible level, through trade, not just in resources, but in the exchange of ideas and cultures. This inaugural lecture is our first opportunity to invite members of the community to join us. Uh, this is not a closed group. Uh, we are uh, interested, interested in having members at different levels, including community members. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Mark Kingwell to our community to help us celebrate the founding of the Advanced Institute for Globalization and Culture and to help celebrate our lives uh, as fellow urbanites in Thunder Bay. Thanks for coming. Uh, one thing I notice about Thunder Bay, uh, it also afflicts, mu afflicts much of Toronto, is, is um, the lack of relative scale. Um, everything is about the same scale. And, uh, this is a canonical textbook diagram of scalar comparison between well-known structures, um, Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, Washington Monument, various St. Paul's charts, other cathedrals. We sometimes forget how much pleasure we take in relative scale, that is, something being taller than something else. It doesn't have to be uh, the Burj Dubai or um, Taipei 101. It doesn't have to be the world's tallest thing to be pleasurably tall relative to something else. This, I love this image. This is uh, monumentality, monumentality. Uh, Aldo Rossi, the great Italian architect and critic in the idea of the city, reminds us that every city needs monuments. It doesn't, not just to commemorate things, but a monument in architectural terms is a structure around which the city is deployed. Uh, by way of which its citizens find themselves. And here is, uh, a <laughs> thankfully unbuilt perhaps, imagine monumental structure. This is the projected palace of the Soviets. And just to give you a sense of this, the scale here, um, those are people down there on the steps, right? little people. And there, of course, is Lenin. And there's a, you know, um, this, this monstrous wedding cake of, of ego. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but surely, if such a building had ever been built, it would be monumental in the sense of organizing everything around it. Structure is perhaps the most basic but the least appreciated aspect of our experience of built forms, mainly because architects cover it up most of the time. Um, this is a deliberately counterintuitive view of the Eiffel Tower, looking straight up the spout. Um, you may know the story that uh, somewhere up there, if you can see the resolution, is the cafe where Guy de Maupassant uh, allegedly ate lunch every day. And the reason was that it was the only place in Paris he would not have to look at the Eiffel Tower. Uh, <coughs> There's the Woolworth. This is 1911. And what's interesting to note about this, this is an example of, of uh, a hybrid form. You see here uh, standard kind of Beaux-Arts, neoclassical elements in the design just chunked into a big volume here. And then this. Um, spire which takes one quarter of the available footprint and creates a very odd silhouette. Um, but what I love about this, this image is that this is a postcard I found from uh, 1913 and uh, in a barn in New Hampshire. And scribbled, I, I don't know if you can make it out there, but scribbled in fountain pen on the top is a line through the ob observation tower that says 570 odd feet, 55th story, was up this last winter. And what I love about this is that, that this, first of all, a noteworthy experience at the time, worth writing home about that one had gone up this. Uh, and that then it extends the imaginary reach of the city well beyond the physical limits of the city. And this little piece of ephemera, a kind of media representation in a way, uh, which now, you know, 100 years later, we are inundated with these kinds of representations. Um, this was a, an attempt to send the city out past its physical limits. Shanghai is um, 
it's not the only futuristic city on Earth, but it characterizes something about our current challenges that I think is, is unique to it. What we have here is a riot of architectural form which has become pretty much post-historical in the sense that there is an argument that up until the 20th century, architecture uh, forms a kind of narrative of progression and uh, schools arise as responses to previous schools and uh, with arguments about why things should improve. In this moment, in this city and a few others, um, anything goes, literally. Any architectural style is available and many of the, the modernist forms of the 20th century, early 20th century imagination have actually been built but with all kinds of super editions straight out of the, the Blade Runner handbook. And one of the, the great pleasures of Shanghai is, is the unbelievable variety of astonishing architecture. Cities finally, this is my favorite metaphor to return to consciousness, cities are like people. They are neither just their thoughts and dreams uh, because they are physical, but neither are they merely their bodies. Right? No city is just the sum total of its buildings. But neither is it just the population at a given time, or even across time. It's the um, conjunction of the two, the embodied consciousness, which is both the person and the city. Thank you very much. <clears throat>